Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. My name is Derek, and I usually test amplifiers, but today we're going to look at something a little different. We're going to look at some lithium batteries for car audio. We'll see what's up. All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about lithium batteries, and I've got some different options here to kind of show you. The small one here, these are the Headway 38120 HP cells. You can see how much smaller they are than the Yenlongs. These are lithium iron phosphate. We're not really going to talk about those today, but we will in a future episode. These are the ones we're gonna talk about, the Yenlongs. These are the 40 amp per hour Yenlongs, the LTO 66160H. And a lot of people think these are just capacitors, and I want to show you the difference in size. They're quite a bit bigger than these standard boost caps uh, from Maxwell. You can see they look a lot like them, but yeah, these are quite a bit larger uh, in length and also in diameter. So now let's talk about some of the things you're gonna to need to put together a bank of these. All right, first and foremost, you're gonna need bolts. These Yenlongs do not come with bolts. And since this is such an odd size, I couldn't find anything local. I use boltdepot.com. They're 12 millimeter by 1.75 millimeter. Here's what they look like. Check the video description below and I'll link to the ones. We wanna get the ones with the serrated uh, lip on them. And the reason we wanna do that is when you put these together, they have a, you can see the seven nanometer uh, torque, which is an extremely light torque. So we want to have something that will grip the cells good. So make sure you pick up a set of these. You're going to need them. 12 millimeter by 1.75. And these are 19 millimeter on the end. So you need a 19 millimeter socket to put them together. So what you, when you get your cells in, what you want to do is you want to check the voltage of each one. They will come probably around 2.2 volts. These are charged up already. So you see we got 2.498. I would check all the cells to make sure they're pretty close. Uh, when I say pretty close, I mean within, within probably a tenth of a volt. And if they're not, what is always recommended is line them up, put them in a line and connect all the positives, connect all the negatives, put them all in parallel. What that'll do is that'll self balance the cells and that way you'll be ready to assemble your bank and charge them. Now, if you have the balance board, you don't have to worry about that quite as much because once you hook everything up, you use the balance board for the charging, it's gonna compensate for that and make sure they all get equally charged. But some people do not use the balance board, so you wanna make sure that you put them all in parallel. Again, that's positive, 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 negative, 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 and let them set for probably 12 to 24 hours, and that'll ensure that they're all the same voltage when you go to put them together. Another thing you may need is a balance board. This is a 6S balance board, which means that it handles six cells. And the way that these Yenlongs are wired up, they're wired up six in the series and as many as you want in parallel. But this little board here has a connector here, which you hook to one negative and then positive one all the way through positive six. And I'll show you that in a minute after I show you the links and everything that I put together. But pick up one of these. You can get this one at Custom Electric customelectric.com, 130 bucks or so is what this cost. And basically what it does is it ensures that all the cells uh, have about the same voltage because you don't want to overcharge one cell versus another. And it's just a protection factor. There are a lot of people that say that you don't even really need these, uh, but I'd say for safety's sake, if you want to be extra careful, you can get one of these and be super safe with your lithium batteries. Now with that said, you may want to actively monitor each cell, get a battery monitor, which will show all the individual cells voltage because if a cell goes out, this still can't protect you completely because it can't redistribute a dead cell. So you still kind of want to check them occasionally, but uh, it's a good idea to have one of these in my opinion, just to be safe. Here are the aluminum links and custom terminals from Toolmaker Metalworks I had made for my 80 amp per hour battery bank. But as you can see here, I want to show myself putting them together and I made a little flub. And you'll see this at the very end where I actually had the two in parallel. You'll see the two positives at the end on the bottom. I did that wrong, 
but I quickly corrected it, but you guys know what to expect from a big dummy. So no harm, no foul. I fixed it. Yeah, I'm human. It's all good. You big dummy. And here you can see my completed two banks of Yen Long 40 amp per hour cells. This is an 80 amp per hour lithium bank and I have these really cool terminals by Toolmaker. And he made me a plexi cover here, put old school stereo on it, super safe. Also have some massive oversized zero gauge terminals on each end, very nice. Now you still want to make sure, like on the bottom, we want to make sure that we got some protection here because we don't want to short these cells out. That would be a bad day. But the way these are explained is each bank of six, and these are in series, remember. So you've got plus here, minus here, and then you go in plus here, minus here, and then plus, minus, etc. So you're going in series. And what that's doing is that's taking the 2.3 volts, multiplying it by six and giving you voltage. Now, I've charged these up to a little over 15 volts. I think they're resting at about 14.9. These LTO cells will rest higher voltage-wise than your standard 12 volt battery. So they say do not use these with an AGM 12 volt because these like to rest somewhere between 14.4 and 15.2 volts. So you don't want to mix this with a 12 volt AGM because you're going to have the lithium being pulled down by the AGM and it's not going to be good. So what a lot of people are doing that use these, if you use these in a car, they're just taking the battery factory deleting, just taking the battery out, putting a distribution block there and then wiring in the lithium cells. Again, you want to make sure that you have it in some kind of an enclosure to protect from anything shorting out being super safe. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you the balance board and how I've got the wires hooked up. So here is the balance board I've already shown you. Again, it's 6S, so it's got uh, six of the resistor banks built on here and logic designed to keep everything nice and balanced. So the way you hook this up, and there's a, there's a uh, diagram here which confuses some people, but it's really, really simple. So here's the only thing to realize, okay? When you hook the connector up, you wanna take the very first one and go to the negative pole. And then the second slot here, you're gonna to go to the very first positive pole, which is down here. And then all the rest of them in order, you go to the second positive, which is up here, the third positive, which is down here, fourth positive here, fifth positive down here, and sixth positive, which is the very end, which is at the terminal bank. So that way you've got everything wired up properly for the balance boards. So remember, negative on cell one, and then you start at the first positive, which it can be here. It's just that the connection is down here because see, this is a positive lead here. So um, that's all you do, it's just negative and then positive, 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 positive on each of the positive sides. Then you got that hooked up and then we'll plug it in here and see what happens. So here you see the balance board. And the one thing to double check is see here it says B minus. We wanna make sure that the negative connection is on this end. Then all we're gonna do is plug it together. And once you plug it in, you're gonna hear, I'll move the microphone here so you can hear it. You're gonna hear, you're gonna hear a very light li a whining sound. Hopefully you can hear that. But so what that's doing is it's ensuring that all the cells are individually balanced, which is what we want. That's a good thing. We do not want them to get out of balance. Now we'll hook up our little voltmeter. Check out the voltage. It's the positive lead. Negative lead, turn our switch. There we go, 14.8 volts. So we've already charged the bank up. We're all good to go. Uh, it's very important when you charge these lithium batteries to keep an eye on them because a standard AGM charger, if you use that, you have to make sure that you stop the uh, batteries when they get to a certain level. Now, these can be charged up as high as 16.5 to 16.8 volts. Um, and it's recommended not to use them lower than about 14.2 volts, but they can drop down to around 12 
during your voltage drop, maybe a little bit more than that. So yeah, so this was just a quick video to show you guys the LTO cells, how to wire up the balance board, um, the terminal blocks I got here. Again, these are from Toolmaker. You can contact him. I'm not sure exactly what he charges, but uh, expect a couple hundred dollars because this is quite a bit of aluminum, quite a bit of milling, really nice terminals here on the end. So we've got each of these cells is $60. So we've got 360 plus 360, 720, plus a couple hundred dollars um, for the aluminum here to get everything together and also the end plates. So it's about 920 and then this is another 130. So, hey, you're looking at about 1,050 bucks. Now, if you check custom electric supply, sometimes they have an 880 amp per hour battery with actually inside of a case with the balance board and everything for like 1,099 bucks. So it's only just a few dollars more. It comes to you already assembled. So that's an option too. But the guys who want the DIY, want to have a little bit fancier um, connectors here, maybe show it off a little more, you can do the DIY but Custom Electric sells the whole kit, so you might want to check that out. Stay tuned in the future videos. I will do tests. I'm going to do some capacity tests. I'm going to do some amplifier tests using just these cells. I want to see how they perform. So stay tuned. We'll do that in the near future. Till next time, BD Wiz, you know where I'm at. I'm out of here. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters, including Alan, William, and Tim. And an extra special thanks to Travis, Jay, Matthew, Marcus, Jesus, Tyre, Soundstream, Registry, High Five Vega. Big D, I'm out of here! Alright, so here is the 80 amp per hour Yenlong LTO lithium bank. I've got the connections going only to the Tar Amp's 8,000 watt amp. Um, I was running everything in parallel here with my eight D1400s, but I've removed the negative connection, so we are no longer running in parallel. We're just going to run the lithium bank and see how it performs. So here is the dyno. All right, let's zoom in and let's turn on the amp. Amp is on. It shows 15.2 volts. I'll show you that real quick upside down for you, but 15.2. And got the 40 Hertz track pulled up. Let's go ahead and set the clamp here to measure. It's measuring one of the two uh, zero gauge inputs. So we'll have to multiply that times two to see what it does. All right, let's try it. 40 Hertz certified. See if we can get 8,000 watts to see how this bank of lithium does by itself. Here we go. So it dropped quite a bit, as you can see. It dropped to 11 volts according to this. And according to this, we pulled 250 amps per zero gauge. So that's about 500 amps of current. And that was over about a 10 second uh, run there that we dropped. So voltage dropped quite a bit. So I'm not sure about these claims that this one bank or two, uh, one bank is suitable for 4,000 watts and two is suitable for 8,000. Maybe if you've got a really big alternator, that's the case. But or maybe if it's just music, you know, test tones are, are super brutal, and uh, yeah, it's difficult to compare one versus the other because test tones are absolutely a worst case scenario. And um, yeah, but there you go, gives you an idea of what. The lithium bank itself can do with 8,000 watts.